Hello guys, my name is Remik and in today's video we are going to focus a little bit on the security of our application. Just imagine that you have the system which is responsible also for the uh, payments of the users and you will store the passwords of your users in the plain text. Then you have the very big hole in your system. You have to hash this password, encrypt somehow and store in the database. Uh, if you would like this video and if it will be useful for you, please hit the subscribe button and the like button down below. Uh, that will be very helpful for me. Okay, so just to get started, I would like to create uh, a password hasher for our application. So, uh, for instance, in the infrastructure layer, I would like to create class called password hasher. I will add this to git and of course we would like to inject this password hasher to our account service so we will extract the uh, interface for it. And this interface will be consumed from our core for from our application layer so just now I will create an interface called ipasswordhasher. So here we need to have two methods, one to hash the password and one to verify if the hashes will be the same. So I will create a method called bool verify and it will take password hash and also the input password. The second one will be uh, the password hashing functionality, so it will return for us base64 converted string. It will be the string hash and we will just take the password that will be in the request, the register request. Now going back to our password hasher, we'll just implement this interface and also the members. Okay, and now uh, we will focus on the variables. So the first thing that we need to have in our hashing uh, functionality is the salt. Salt is like the random generated uh, byte array that will be added to our uh, to our hash. Mm, so we will create private private const int salt size, and it will be uh, equal to uh, this actually value to have the mm, 16 bytes. The next thing that we need to have is the private const private const int and it will be the key size. The key size uh, is very important just to create the hash for the specific length. So the key size will be the same as the representation of uh, our Mm, hashing algorithm. The hashing algorithm will just use uh, with the 256 by, uh, bits, so it has to be uh, 256 bits divided by 8, so it's going to be 32. The next thing that we need to focus on is the iterations. I iterations are increasing the mm, the loop of creation of the uh, encryption key. So by default, it has to be uh, at least one, uh, it has to be 10,000. So I will set iterations and those iterations will be 1,000. And also we need to specify private static read only hash algorithm name and it's going to be the hash algorithm name and we are using as I have said uh, 200 
56 bits algorithm. So it's like equal to this key size in that case. Okay, and now we have to create the salt, so the random byte array based on our salt size. Uh, so it's gonna be the random number generator, get bytes, and we are specifying the salt size that we have just set in our variables on the top. Mm. Then we have to create the hash, and the hash will be uh, used um, with the usage of that static class and this kind of um, hash creation. We are specifying the password, then we are specifying the salt, then the iterations. Also, we need to uh, set the hash algorithm name, so hash algorithm. And see this hash algorithm name. And also the key size. So the key size that is represent representation of our uh, algorithm. So it will be the key size that we've just set. Then, uh, just to make sure and just to make this easier, we have to set also the delimiter. So we are gonna create the string and we are joining this based on our delimiter. I will just create private static char and it will be called delimiter and uh, it will be the semicolon in that case. Okay, and now we have to uh, return the um, string.join. String.join, we are specifying our delimiter. And then uh, we have to store the salt. So we are converting to, to base64 string our salt. And then also our hash. And then we have to implement this in our registration. So um, now um, I am going to my account service and I would like just to inject private read only I password hasher password password hasher and also injecting over there. Okay, now when we are uh, registering our user, we have just to get the hash value of the password that he just put to our register request. So the password hash will be the password hasher dot hash and register request dot password. And here in the hashed password field, we are replacing this normal password with the password hash that will be stored in the database. We are going now to uh, also add our iPassword hasher to our dependency injection container. So I'll just open web UI and the program CS. And I would like to add now to our builder services at scoped I password hasher and the implementation of it. So we are ready to go, but we have also the one additional, uh, one additional method over there, verify. So when the user would like to log into our service, he will provide the normal password. And then we have to verify if this password will be the same as the hash value that we were storing in our database. So just first, we have to we have to get the elements because uh, as you remember over there we were storing this as uh, the string that was um, that was combined um, with the delimiter so the semicolon so we are taking the elements and it will be the password hash it will be the password hash dot 
split and we are specifying the the limiter now now we have just to get the salt so the salt will be the first element of our uh, of our element array so it will be the mm, convert from base64 string and it will be the elements and the first element of the byte array and then also the hash so the convert from base64 string elements and we are getting the first uh, the second element in our array so the first index now we have to hash the input of the user that he provided in the login request so we'll hash hash input and then we are just hashing the same as actually before so we are getting the rfc derived bytes and then we are getting the password password input so the input uh, input password then it was the salt so our our salt then it was um, as you see over there the iteration so we are just copying it and then hash algorithm name and of course the key size okay and now we are going to return the value from the cryptographic operations dot fixed time equals so we are taking the hash and also the hash input if it will be the same then we are ready to go and the user uh, was using the same password as it was stored in the database before now we are going back to our account service and in the login async uh, that i'm just logging our user and returning the um, the jwt token then we have just to check if actually uh, this password matches what we were storing in the database so it will be the result and then password hasher verify so the first thing is the password hash so our user and the hashed password and the second one is from the login request the password if it will be true if result will be false then throw new exception for instance it yeah it, sh it should be the specific exception but uh, just to make it faster it will be the normal one mm, and i will just specify the mm, username or password is not correct Okay, and now I would like to set a couple breakpoints just to show you how it works like. So, mm, for instance, we need uh, here the breakpoint, here, also maybe over there, and I will run this in the debug mode. Okay, and we have the login and the register endpoint. First of all, we would like to create the new user. It will be, for instance, John Wayne. Email will be John dot Wayne email dot com, and the password will be John John one two three and exclamation mark. I will also go inside of this hash method. And we'll just hit execute. As you see, in this register request, we have our John John one two three exclamation mark. Going further, it created the salt, also the hash, and returned it, and it will be stored in the database. Now, going to the database 
I would like to show you how it looks like. I have the users, database table, and I will just select everything from, from users. As you see, I have the John, Wayne, and the hash password. Hash password looks like this. So if you don't know the hashing algorithm, the salt size, it will be very, very hard just to decrypt this data and uh, use uh, in terms of, for instance, some forgery. Now, I would like to, I would like to show you how the login works like. So as you remember, uh, I will use this method and I will try it out. Email will be John Wayne email dot com and the password as you remember it was John John123 exclamation mark. Execute going back to Rider and here we have the result and this method. We are continuing. We have the John John123 and the password hash from the database itself. We are comparing the hashes, hash input, so it looks like this, and then going further, we have the result that is true, because it was equal according to what we were storing for the John Wayne in the database. And now, as you see, we have the John, we have the Wayne, and also the JWT token that is returned from my application. Okay, thank you so much guys for watching this video. Uh, if you liked this video, please hit the subscribe button and write some comment just to let me know that you liked my implementation or maybe you have some other ideas how it should be simplified or maybe uh, just to be made more advanced. Thank you so much and have a nice day.